Nach langer Fahrt im Weltraum nähert sich die Hispaniola endlich dem Planeten, auf dem der sagenhafte Schatz des Kapitän Flint vergraben sein soll. Der kleine Jimmy hat inzwischen erfahren, dass die Mannschaft eine Meuterei plant. Während der Steuermann Hans den Kapitän und dessen Freunde beseitigen will, versucht der alte Silver, der die Mannschaft zusammengestellt hat, die Meuterei zu verhindern. Er weiß, dass ohne den Kapitän eine Rückkehr auf die Erde unmöglich ist. Jimmy kann noch rechtzeitig seine Freunde warnen. Bei der Landung auf dem Planeten macht Hans ein missglücktes Manöver, sodass sich das Raumschiff am Rande eines Sees in die Erde bohrt. Der Graf, sein Diener Joyce, Dr. Livesey und Kapitän Smollett können aus dem Raumschiff fliehen, das sich jetzt in der Hand der Piraten befindet. Sie erreichen eine verlassene Raumstation. Jimmy, der seine Freunde bei der Flucht aus dem Raumschiff verloren hat, verirrt sich im Wald. Stilts. Stilts? Stilts walking through the water at night when the tide comes up. Hmm. You mean you've been here for three years? Three full years. Alone. Abandoned. I live on shellfish and berries. Hey, hey, Jimmy, listen. Um, I saw you arriving. You wouldn't happen to have any bread with you, would you? <laughs> any bread? bread? Yeah, bread. <laughs> Jimmy, a uh, spaceship that landed in the lake today. Well, that happened to be Captain Flynn's. No, but there's some of his men in our crew, unfortunately. Unfortunate? You said unfortunately? Which would lead me to believe that you're not one of them? No, they're pirates. We escaped. Uh, uh, pirates, yes, I know. I saw you running through the woods. I've been following you for the past two hours. <laughs> Have you seen my friends? Yes. Yes, I, I've seen them, but... Jimmy. Who? Who? What's the matter? Who are your friends? Oh, they're the squire, the doctor, and the captain. They're the people who... The people? Well, they're very... You mean important people? Oh, yeah. Oh. Jimmy, wait. What are these bugs? Hmm? You'll never guess what they are. They're mosquitoes, just like the ones we have back on Earth. <laughs> Ain't that a kick in the head? <laughs> Where's the automatic beacon? How should I know? Where'd you put it? It's supposed to be on the island, didn't you see it? You've been here for three years. How could you miss it? Well, it's not here. What's that? Um, dip your head down a little. Put this on. Closer. Getting closer. Listen, this is a mosquito hood. Why am I whispering? I'll tell you. Otherwise, they'll eat you up alive. <laughs> oh, they'll all come to a sticky end. They will. Who will? The, the, the men up in the trees. Aren't you going to keep your hood on? You mean the pirates? Yeah, pirates. Come on. Come on, hop on. You can't stay there all night. Come You've on. got stilts on. Oh, bloodsuckers will get you. Where are you going to take me? <laughs> Jimmy, you hungry? Yes. Come on. Fifteen men on a dead man's chest. Yo ho ho and a box full of truck. <laughs> Jimmy. Oh. Mosquito. Fifteen men on a dead man's chest. Yo ho ho and a box full of truck. Hey, listen, listen. Can you put in a good word for me with your friends? Yeah, if I can find them. Oh, look. Is it day or night now? It's both one of the advantages of this planet. There are two moons, Daisy and Susan. Really? Werewolves go crazy here. How come you walk on stilts? Well, what 
with two moons when it's high tide, one gets swamped around here. <laughs> but I'll take you up to higher ground, to a great place. Is that the Hammerstone? What? That rock up there. Oh, that, that's always been there, Jim. Don't worry about it. Now, there's a place you'll like it. Very big. There's room for everybody. Hey, look at those. What? Oh, the dinosaur ribs, yeah. Can you imagine the vultures picking away at those? <laughs> What's that? What's it look like? Looks like an upside-down missile to me. What is it? Oh. All right. That's an answer to a prayer. What do you mean? Well, my mom must have prayed for me. The good Lord must have answered. <laughs> doesn't go like that. Well, how's it go? Splash. Oh. Well, on this planet, it goes cha, 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 cha. It's heavy water. No, it isn't. <laughs> you should feel the raindrops here. They put holes in your head. <laughs> hey, Jimmy, you ever been in a first-class hotel? Five stars, two moons? Two moons? Now, why? <laughs> They'll be my guest. Where? In this accident. In this accident? Yeah. A spaceship fell here about 60, maybe 70 years ago, and it turned out to be a godsend for me. Yeah, and I'll tell you something else. <laughs> what? <laughs> Would you scratch my nose? Oh, yeah. Thanks. Blessed are those who scratch your nose when your hands are tied and so are your toes. <laughs> so the saying goes. <laughs> Careful. It's me. You mean there's someone else? No. Steady now. Sorry, this is the back door. Easy does it. Careful, or we'll come tumbling down like that good old egg who took the fall but broke his leg. <laughs> ben Gunn was the most eccentric person I'd ever met. Of course, having been marooned on a deserted island for three years certainly added to his already bizarre nature. I later suspected that he didn't clear the entrance to his makeshift home because the inconvenience it caused him helped him to pass the time away. Did you get through, Jim? Jimmy? J give me a hand, will you? I'm stuck. I just gotta find some time to do some gardening. Thanks. Get rid of these vines. This is the back door. The front door is blocked. Weeds. At least the kitchens. They were equipped to feed over a thousand people. But, uh, it's kind of pot now. It used to be a first-class ordered hotel, Jim. Served the best food and goodies in this whole galaxy. See all those bottles and tins there? <laughs> That's champagne and caviar. Tons of it, Jimmy. James. Sparkling wine. Here we are. Bubbles get your nose. Come on, Jimmy. What's... And now caviar. What's in there? This high-class stuff, Jimmy. You wouldn't find this in a... used to be the main lounge, Jim. Ah, they really built great ships in those days. Solar batteries still work. Ooh, nice, huh? <laughs> Look around. Jimmy, did you ever hear about flying saucers? Well, about that time, they built these luxury interplanet vacation spaceships. Like this one. In the same style as those ancient uh, ocean liners, like the Queen Mary, the Ile de France, and Nancy Regan. The, uh, well, you see, rich people would take these... Uh, escape cruises to exotic planets and, uh... From the time young Jim Hawkins and I began this adventure, there were several moments when he was not in my presence. The fact that now he could have fallen into the pirate's hands put us all in a very anxious state. Though I personally tried to underplay my anguish, I was beset with guilt for having consented to his coming along. Ah. Open! I think it's the doctor, sir. Open up! Oh. Let's see! Ah. What happened? Ah, oh, mosquitoes. 
Millions of mosquitoes everywhere. Thank you, Squire. Yeah, yeah. And when they bite, there's something in the sting that doesn't make the blood coagulate as readily as it should. What about Jimmy? There's not a sign of Jimmy anywhere. Oh, dear. Or the spaceship. The spaceship? Uh, yeah, it seems to have disappeared. How could it possibly disappear? Well, I don't know. They shipped it to something, but it's not where we landed. Ah, uh, this is a godforsaken planet. It's like evolution stopped here. No sign of life except for these insects and these poisonous mosquitoes and the leeches everywhere. You know, this planet's got two moons. I think that's what causes this incredible tidal force. Water everywhere. Tastes like fish. Oh, it's fish eggs. It's caviar. Go a little better on toast, but... <laughs> Here you go. Drink up, Jimmy. <laughs> Don't worry. There's thousands of them. Now, Jimmy, what I want from you is a signed piece of paper. Contract. Contract that says that when the rescue expedition gets here, you take me back with you. Whenever it gets here. And in return, I can put your people up for six months, a year, whatever. You see, I sleep here because it's close to the kitchen and I'm lazy. But upstairs there are there are hundreds of rooms. I could put the squire up in a in, in, in a suite with a private bathroom and the whole thing. But Jimmy. I have to have that signed piece of paper. I'll set you all up until help comes along, but I want something in return. It's only fair. I want that signed piece of paper, Jimmy. See, because... Because I'm lonely. And I want to go home. I, I want to eat a piece of bread again. Now, let me, let me tell you something as a friend. You don't know much about me, except my nose itches every now and then, but I sit out with the best of them. Believe me, Jim. Billy Bones, Long John Silver, and all the others. Now, I know it doesn't look like it, but I used to be one of them. You know? You're <laughs> That's what I was. But that was the past, Jimmy. And it has to be erased with that signed piece of paper. So, you have him draw it up, and one of these afternoons, I'll pass by and pick it up. You were part of Flint's? Yeah, I was one of his crew. But Silver listened to me. He said, hey, you'll lead a fine life, young feller. And it was a fine life. I was rocking women and whizzing around the galaxies for four years. <laughs> you know, I was with I was with uh, Flint when he buried the treasure. Well, I, I wasn't with him. We were in orbit for six days, six full days. And on the seventh, he came back alone. Yeah. between the riverbed and Dinosaur Valley. Hang on, mates. Here we go. It wasn't a very good idea, Jim. We started digging near what I thought was a likely spot. Although it wouldn't have taken much land to cover up Flint's treasure, however bountiful it was. The crew tired quickly and turned on me. Well, it's got to be here someplace. 
tape. Getting rich requires some work. It can't just be handed to you. Oh, it's a nice day. The mosquitoes are laying low. Well, let's, uh, let's hop. Huh, huh. That's nothing. It's your fault. It's you who started talking about I suggest we start digging up there. Go on. Go. You two, go. Come back here! I was punished, Jimmy. Don't leave me here! I don't know why or by whom. Oh, but was I punished. Marooned. Marooned on an island in a planet forgotten by man and God alike. Susan's passing Daisy. Just a little hunk of cheese she is. But she's got a lot more spirit than that big blob of custard Daisy. <laughs> she's almost straight up now. That means it's midnight. It's... It's midnight. It's midnight. Jimmy, it's... Midnight. And Susan's high in the sky. gun the night before. Did he really exist? Or was he just a dream? My head was still spinning from the champagne, and the taste of caviar was still in my mouth, so he must have been true, although he did defy one's imagination. But then I woke up all at once. The radio beacon was only a hundred yards away, which meant that Ben Gunn knew very well where it was, and carried me here in my sleep. I even spotted Joyce high up on the tower. were griping as they climbed down the trees on which they had taken refuge the night before, and with good reason. The island was a pestilent place, a swamp by night and a desert by day. Leeches and insects now gave way to a still greater torment, thirst. Who's got water around here? There's a stream. We passed by on last night. It stinks. You'll drink it. I got some drug. Yeah, well, go choke on it. Thirst and the fear of thirst were taking hold of the pirates, and they reacted in accordance with their perverse natures. I told you, Morgan. We'll die of thirst in this sump hole island. Leeches are worse. The hell they are. That's water! Sandy's got water! Look! The dirty bastard! Yeah! It's my water! Yeah! It was my water! It was! It's mine now! Hey, where is it? Hey! Give me that water! Yeah. <laughs> It was my one! Yeah! Can I get you? You're not gonna get anybody! I'm gonna cut your liver out and be into the blood! 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 The fight quickly degenerated into a free-for-all. No bars held. Not only the fists flew, but oaths and utterances of the worst kind. I recalled with what indifference they had killed Chief Technician Davis and braced myself to witness more of the same. Ah! Awesome, man, you idiot. Stop it! You're all imbeciles. 
I said stop it! Don't stand there and get me wrong. His leg's out of whack again. Yeah. The knee spring has gone haywire. Mark, give it a tap. Where? The knee. Where else? Yeah, yeah. Silver, I made a white flag. Now what? Well, go and tell him I want to talk. Come on, give me that. You're going to break it, keep hitting it like that. Shut up. I know my leg. sign of the spaceship and Mr. Silver's approaching us with his men and a white flag. Well, that's interesting. Lord knows what he's up to now. <laughs> Doctor, I'll take care of it. I hear well, you said captain. That's me, sir. What a fast career. The crew elected me their captain. After you deserted us, sir. My first decision is to surrender. If we can reach an agreement. You talk of desertion? What crew? There's no crew here, only a batch of mutineers, Mr. Silver. It's in our mutual interest to cooperate, sir. I beg you, Captain, open your heart. After all, the Hispaniola is lost. Yes, probably thanks to one of your men, Mr. Silver. Look at him, sir. Not a drop of food or water since last night. At least the doctor will offer us a, a drink. Hmm? Yes. As you wish, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Squire, sir. Before making my appearance and gaining safety in the Beacon House, I wanted to make sure I wouldn't be trapped by Silver's men. As the sight of them gave me no confidence, I decided to bide my time. Take your water and be off. I appreciate you need to discipline, Captain. But these aren't exactly military men. This is a private expedition. Yeah, we want our share of food supplies. Right where you are, Mr. Silver. It is not for the crew to decide where right or wrong lies. The intergalactic flight code makes no exceptions, Mr. Silver, as concerns disciplinary measures. Doctor! The... Jimmy, what happened? I made a wrong turn out of the ship. Hello there, boy. I knew the boy would be all right, sir. Yes, of course. Some water, sir. Well, here we are again, Jimmy. Just as we were on the Hispaniola. If you've nothing more to say, Mr. Silver, our meeting is over. Sir, I don't think it's fair the way you smashed in the head of one of my men. And God knows how you beat up the other two. Oh. Upon my soul, it must not happen again. Get to the point, Mr. Silver. What do you want? We feel abandoned and betrayed, sir. We need food, water, Shelter? Silver, you've got some nerve. Well, it's uh, quite clear. You need shelter and you'd like this place. Sir, I couldn't have put it better myself. You didn't just come for food and shelter, did you? Well, there's room enough. We could be one big, happy family. <laughs> oh, yes, of course. Only we are four. Oh, I'm sorry, four and a half. And there are ten of you. If we were to let you in, how long would it take your pirate crew to wring our foolish necks, sir? Oh, these four... I'll tell you how things stand, Mr. Silver. The Hispaniola is lost, and none of you, except Mr. Hands, perhaps, is capable of taking us back. So, the only thing to do is to wait for a rescue expedition. But you haven't got any water. You can drink the swamp water if you like. It's full of potassium, and it's fine for the plants. But you don't have any medical supplies, and this is a very inhospitable planet, so... You and your men can come here one at a time, unarmed, in such a way that it can't do any more damage. When the expedition arrives, I agree to take you back to Earth for a regular trial. 
You drive a hard bargain, sir. That may very well be. But those are my conditions. Out with you now, John Silver. We've had enough of your company. We've had enough of your company. <laughs> that goes to be a cut for us. Look out! And you call yourself gentlemen? Joyce, my king. There's no time for etiquette. What do we do, Ollie? Shut up. Leave it, Vance. You have to slow down. Pick up that truck. Do as he says. I got it, I got it. Bring it. Come on! Uh, Silver! Uh, I saw another entrance down there. Did? Hey, you, you! Follow us! Put him out the door! Now, oh, come on! Knock it down! Uh, Any idea who could have cracked the heads of Silver's men? I think it was Ben Gunn. Who? I met him last huh? night in a tree. Yeah, all right. Later, Jimmy. Now get back there and hide. I really didn't mean I believe you, but who is he? Hold on, I'll go and cover the wall. Jimmy, remember the Alamo! The what? Oh, we're ready to make concessions if we get a share of the loot. Uh, if we you want to get killed now, instead. We never will. You want to get killed, you go in there right now. Yeah, we want a meeting. What kind of meeting you're talking about? You're nowhere. You're not always right, Silver. Nah, but you're always hmm. wrong. Come on. Doctor, your mania for collecting antiques has really paid off this time. Hmm. Joyce, polish these pistols. They're priceless. I'm afraid I won't be able, Squire. Oh, no. Joyce. Sorry, but I have to leave your service at such a dying moment, sir. Your choice. I, I'm sorry to have brought you up here. Will you forgive me? That wouldn't be very respectful, Squire, sir. But thank you for treating me like a human. Mr. Smollett, would you mind saying a prayer for me? This is the normal practice for humans.
Jimmy, hol meine Medikamententasche. Smollett ist verletzt. Und die da auch. Obwohl ich es nicht gern tue, muss ich Ihnen helfen. Ah, stop the nonsense and stay still. Right. Okay, you're all patched up now. You can go and join your friends. I prefer staying here with you, me. No, that's not possible. We'd have to keep watching you both all the time. First you shoot us. Then you treat us. Then you send us out to be eaten alive. By mosquitoes and bloodsuckers. It was your own choice. Jimmy, see anything yet? No, nothing. Not a thing. Okay. Do you believe the boy's story about that Ben Pistol? <laughs> ben Gunswire. <laughs> of course. I don't know. Who else would go around bashing heads in the night, huh? Well, the kid could have dreamt it while he was on that tree. Oh, Squire, Squire, you said the same thing the night the boy told us about the map and the pirates. Then why did that Ben Gunn take him back to that tree and not here? Hmm. I don't know. I guess he's a little bit crazy living on his own all this time. I mean, that's why he wants this piece of paper. One thing's for certain. He doesn't trust any of us. Yet. How many weeks does it take for a rescue expedition to get here? I'm sorry, Captain. Not weeks. It's months. Captain, I left a sealed envelope with my managing director explaining exactly where we are. He's a, a very precise, punctilious young man. He knows he must open it if I'm not back by the end of August. Well, Squire, as for shelter, we're one up on the pirates. The place is fairly secure and we have water. The pirates are going to do all they can to take it over. Here we are with no ammunition. Oh, but they don't know that. Ah, uh, they'll find out when they attack. The Hispaniola couldn't have drifted too far. But how do we go out and search for it? Dr. Lindsay. Yes? I could slip out, find Mr. Ben Gunn and search for the ship. Not having you running the risk of spending another night outside. Well then, idleness leads to depressing thoughts. I propose that we paint the dome. Hardly. We should improve our defenses, taking advantage of the fact that the mutineers have disappeared. All right, Jamie, watch your hand. We gathered as many felled tree trunks as our strength would allow. How's that? Okay. Yes. Blocking off those spots around the beacon house through which the pirates were likely to enter. The doctor and I did most of the work. The captain was still suffering from his wound, and the squire had decided to play the squire. Yeah, okay. The pirates will have a hard time coming through there. Huh. You like old things of the past, don't you, doctor? Even smoking. It's the last one. You still carry that antique watch with you all the time? Why, you want it all the time? Yeah, it's fun to watch the hands go around. It's, uh... Five o'clock. If you're thinking about what you dreamt, I'd say your friend's not going to be coming this evening, huh? But I did see him. I wasn't dreaming. Hmm. Okay, Jimmy. I believe you. Now, you stay here and keep watch. I'll go and check the rest of the area, okay? Okay. Doctor, would you give me a hand, please? Certainly, Captain. I knew I'd be sorry for running off again, but it irritated me no end not being believed. The doctor obviously didn't believe me, even though he said he did. But how could anybody make up a character like Ben Gunn? Not even my wildest imagination could have invented him. 
I had to find him. I knew he was close by. But on the hibiscus planet, close was a very remote term. The place had seemed so alive only the night before, and yet, the very next day, despite the sunlight streaming through, nothing could have been more desolate. It was Ben Gunn, the lonely maroon man on the island who made all the difference. I've often thought about that. It's people who really make all the difference. About giving me a hand, Squire. You didn't say please. Ready. Jimmy. Are you... Huh? You're Jimmy. You're Ben Gunn? <laughs> Don't be afraid, sir. We're friends. Live there! Drop everything and call Jimmy. Huh? Mr. Ben Gunn has just arrived. <laughs> My pleasure. Come. Jimmy. Jimmy. Where's the boy got to?
sighting of Ben Gunn's boat. I knew it was his because it couldn't be anybody else's. What with the sudden tides and winds on the island, I was afraid he'd disappear before I could reach him. I ran like mad, but no Ben Gunn. Losing the gaff didn't help any. Don't ask me why I held onto the bottle. Anyway, I plunked down in that improvised boat and let the fast-changing winds and currents take me where they would. I was too stoned to do anything else.
didn't have the time to get over the horror of seeing crewman Patrick O'Rourke on the floor, knife to death when I found assistant conductor Israel Hands slumped in his command seat. Gleich habe ich es geschafft. <lacht> 